I had always heard your entire life flashes in front of your eyes the second before you die. First of all, that second isn't a second at all. It stretches on forever. For me, I was lying on my back at Boy Scout camp, watching falling stars and yellow leaves from the maple trees that line our street. Or the first time I saw my cousin Tony's brand new Firebird. I guess I could be pretty pissed off about what happened to me. But it's hard to stay mad when there's so much beauty in the world. Sometimes I feel like I'm seeing it all at once, and my heart fills up like a balloon. And then I remember to relax. Stop trying to hold onto it. And then all I can feel is gratitude for every single moment of my silly little life. Tobin, Tom Egg, Hula Hoop, Buikis Ladia. And also uh, the donkey uh, and Jesus. And I'm the mo water. Je suis un il. Shona Murphy is Adam Dunn, Tom Oakblina Degdish, Tommy McConey, Savalia, E. Gundy de Bredorn, um, Tom Audra Wan, Agon McNeil and Cotagum, as Taurus May, August, Isay Miscreed of Renault, Fihikuig, Shock to Shea, Truck Cahar Quagashe. Well, Pifari May Kubla Kesh Suresh, Sola Layman Widge Air on Iliacht. Anish Inish Sung for the Canter Fame. Tosha Kuhn. Oka wants an eha, not at all galore trid, galore trids a counter. Marshin nihem a mock more on. Jack galore. August cutting into the spree, it could amass air. Ishton McKeo, in my humor um, cuddle ta. Dana may rock to lay a vock, new may reward you. Well, Taught you this, Faylock, her father. Um, kind of thought and sail. And will they go re Sasta? Well, Ta is a gun. Go will me an animal raw, go will gock road gahin top. Lock, cut on fair in a raw, Tan sail the negri shite. Tommy Galer Crutcher, of course. I am with in Taki of Marathon to Motomi the extrackle that machine, August. Well, shouldn't. She's not a what? To five old con like my fam. Cahig me e a colonel leave Yogna Gucky have. To far gone down or relasa her nor Kylin for in soccer saga. Shingok Shockton. To Glosser Magurus in the Humacal Tagum. Cade Sosta. Case to talk with a fucking Sosta. I will toss the Sosta. Oh, I'm Gaham. Shona, can't me meow rude ditch Gurmisha occur in a question on show? Came for. Ta is a good fader lum on Chonga, Lowert. Marshin Laromi, she free Rodiella. And we'll toss a sauce that in the hail Oberlum. Shona. Tommy fear of Orha, go will the hail Balia co Fossuk Shin. 
Borja, good God, you too. Unscrew the show, you ain't of. I guess not well the hell like dull dear Ock and more a howly too. Ock. It's Tossa. On tain dinner, I thought all but a rud egg in the ain't of we show. Better get cart down on Tana leaving it. For all I'm shin. Nagui, huh? Nagui, a do we be in Shikura? Was Kurenshi Grim or Gini? Nagui and us be in Shichas, is Kurenshi Rat or Hilta? Nagui and Ira be in Shiturim, is Kurenshi Shok as Chihi? Nagui and Ira be in Shifa, is Kurenshi Is Gilinta? Wake so great, Iona. There's nothing in this world like fire. I dare you to show me a piece of art that can rival a five alarm fire. You just couldn't do it. I like art as much as the next person, but I wonder always when I see a Van Gogh or a Rembrandt, I wonder what it would look like on fire. That second before the painting caves in, that would be incomparable. Sadly, I don't think any of us will live to see it. At first, it's just an idea, a spark, a little yellow flame that takes nurturing to grow to an inferno. Those oranges, those yellows, those little cores of blue, they don't just happen by themselves. They take planning, they take skill, they take love. And I'm not some Zippo flicking 14 year old. I'm a fucking artist. I've been thinking. It's so unexpected and ill-timed. Well, I have a few issues to discuss. The only issue to discuss is between my legs. Witty, but all week I've provided you with a good tongue lashing, but you've been avoiding me personally. I haven't thought that is so. Where is our marriage heading? Our what? Our marriage. Are we really to remain in separate chambers? Yes. Austin answered. Please, let us continue. No, I'm not satisfied. Nor am I. But I could be. Would you not be happier if you just admitted your savage longing and gave in to your love for me wholeheartedly instead of this clitty bitty? Clitty bitty? Indeed. I love you. You love me. I suggest you admit your love for me. I'm fond of you. I see you are to toy with me longer. You know, it is this mean streak I do not appreciate. Maybe this was a mistake. Maybe this is what you and your body want. So how could it be a mistake? Your head is the impediment. I, I do not wish to quarrel with you, merely for you to just give in to yourself. Tell me the truth. You do not love me. You think you do, but you do not. I love you. Stop saying it. Your heart is not a normal heart. You're not capable of love, not real love. Selflessness for another, tenderness, curiosity, intimacy. I fucking love you and you love me. I do not love you. And I will never love you the way you hope. 
You are a violent person who, while he eats pussy well, is still nothing more than a mercurial maniac. I'm sorry to speak harshly. Let us agree to our accommodations and finish me off. You know, I knew you were ruthless. I never knew you were fucking heartless. Peter, I have a very busy day. Will you finish me or not? No, I will not. Then you may go. I will no longer be needing your services. And I will no longer be providing them. Then be off with you. Be off. <sighs> you know when you're just, you're with someone and you love them and they know it and they love you and you know it but you're at a party and you're both talking to other people and you're laughing and smiling, doing your own thing. But then you look across the room and they are just looking straight back at you. It's, it's not because they're possessive or it's precisely sexual, but because that's just your person in this life. And it's really funny <laughs> and it's sad too, but only because this life is gonna end. But it exists. It will exist here, in public, unnoticed, <laughs> and no one else knows about it. The case was getting colder by the second. I decided to stop by the rat on Queen Street. See if he had any beans to spill. Come on. Lieutenant Drevin, police. I'd like to ask a few questions. One second. Listen, man, I told the cops everything they wanted to know. I swear to God, that girl was 18. What's it got to do, you know? No, no, I'm, I'm not here about oh, that. you're not still harping about that condo across from the boys' academy. Listen, I told you, I was birdwatching. No, it's, it's about something else. It's about the body. Yeah. Listen, I thought she was asleep. I didn't realize she was dead. No, listen. Does this face look familiar to you? I don't know. My memory's not so good. Oh, really? Maybe this will refresh your memory? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> sure, yeah, I remember him. I've seen him around. What do you want to know? I'm not so sure I should tell you. What about now? I'm still not sure I should. All right, his name is Norberg. He was a cop. He was no cop. He was dealing H. What? <laughs> I'm telling you, he was dirty. Norberg? Mm hmm. Why, you sniveling scum. Listen, man, I didn't know the guy. He worked nights in, in Ludwig's shipping. He, he tried passing something off on one of my guys. That's all I know, I swear. What are you gonna do with that, huh? Why should I tell you? Maybe this will change your mind? I still don't think I should. Um, spot me 20. Yeah, how about now? How about I'm going down to Lugui's office right now to find out if you're telling the truth? Hi. 
Thanks. Come in. Yeah, cool. Did you bring the, um, the... <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, fuck, I think I left it at home. That's why I gave you the small container. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. It's, um, it's my first time. Um, listen, I feel it behoves me to offer to do this in a fashion way. Given your extreme beauty. No, no, it'd just be too complicated. Here, this is sterile. Do you mean do it like here? Okay, I was, I was just being polite, sorry. Um, where's your bathroom? There. Should I go or? No, I'll uh, be back in the gist. <laughs> um. Guy? Mm hmm? How come you, um, you never became a mathematician? I studied math because I thought it was beautiful. That's all. I never really wanted to be a mathematician. You think math is beautiful, but you didn't want to be a mathematician? I know it's beautiful. But for me, the hymn was enough. I couldn't have taken the frustration. What do you mean? I've never seen the whole thing, you know? I'm always just getting these little glimpses of truths. You know, constantly searching for just these little slivers and... and... <sighs> anyway, I better... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Swift. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of you. Cool. Yeah. Um, I found just found the one that um, I made earlier. <sighs> Guys, I have been thinking a lot about what Chris would have wanted me to say today. The advice he'd give me, which would be something silly like, you know what, babe? Fuck it. These guys know all about me. Tell them about someone else. So I thought I would tell you about a hero of Chris's. Captain Joe Kissinger. Um, in 1960, he climbed into a foil balloon and he ascended 32 kilometers into the stratosphere. And then armed only with a parachute, he jumped. He fell for four minutes and 36 seconds and he reached 740 miles an hour before opening his parachute five kilometers above the earth. It had never been done before. And it's never been done since. He did it because he could. And that's why Chris loved him. Because the thing about Chris was, he jumped out of a foil balloon every day. Because he could. And that's why we loved him. I went to the theater department of the university looking for good scenes and I asked one of the professors, I was like, oh, I, I need a killer scene. And he said, here, this is it. It was from Angels in America and I knew I could take first place if I did a good enough job. I, I told my mom and dad so that they could come to the competition. 
Now you have to understand my my parents go to everything, every ball game, every hockey game, everything I've ever done. And, and, and they said to me if I did that scene, they wouldn't come see me in the competition because they believed it was wrong. That, uh, that homosexuality is wrong. Can I tell you something, Ali? <laughs> like, for real. If I say some dark shit, you're not gonna report me to the state or anything. When I'm clean, you know, when I'm present, like a part of this world, I don't just think about relapsing. It's darker than that. You can say that sobriety is my greatest weapon. To tell you the truth, drugs are probably the only reason I haven't killed myself. Yet. Yeah, Joe's gonna take care of it tomorrow. Okay, thank you. All right, bye. I'd like to volunteer, please. Okay. Uh, why do you want to volunteer? Because you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Is that right? Uh, but what do you think about Ted Murphy? Who? Ted Murphy. The person you're volunteering to help elect TD, Tom <laughs> oh, uh, he's, he's wonderful, I'm sure he'd make a great, great TD. Okay, do you want a canvas? Yeah, I, I do. And what do you think about his stand on housing? I don't know. I'm sure it's very good, though. Maybe canvassing isn't your thing. Uh, we do have loads of other work that needs doing, though, like office work, filing, poster hanging. If you want to go talk to Tom, he'll give you something to do. If you don't mind, I'd rather work with you. We're all working together here. <laughs> I'm a rescue helicopter pilot, so I'm kind of busy during the day. That sounds really dangerous. Oh, it is. <laughs> to save three people from the Liffey there yesterday. Would you like to get a coffee with me someday? I thought you were busy during the daytime. Ah. Well, Annie, I fly by here a lot. And I see you here at this little desk. You just seem really lonely. And maybe you need a friend. And if you want, I could be that. I could be your friend. You want us to be friends? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you say? There you are. You wandered off on us. Uh, sure, you know yourself, Joe. <laughs> Come on and we'll get you that cup of coffee. You uh -huh. want it. I stayed the summer with my Aunt Denise when I was a kid. Her little girl, Linny, loved me. Her favorite game was to jump out of her bathtub all soaking wet and jump on me, tickling and shouting, pruny tag, because her fingers were all pruny. Um, one day, Aunt Denise walked in in the middle of a tickle attack, and she yelled, Linny, get back in that tub and stay there. And then she grabbed me by my wrist and dragged me to the kitchen, turned on the front burner of the stove, 
And then she pulled down my pants and lifted me up. I feel the burner red hot under me. And she said, I could throw your ass down that burner right now. Would that be fun? I cried and cried and the tears sizzled as they hit the burner. And then she put me down. If I catch you with Linny like that ever again. I always thought white people were really bad kissers. It's not their fault. It's just... Most of them have really small lips. Can't embrace a challenge of lips like mine. And then... They try to compensate the lack of lip with the tongue. And the tongue ends up everywhere. Just flapping about. Get my drift. Hi guys. Uh, thanks for all the comments and special thanks to everyone for the tips on detonators. Tomorrow's election day and Bella Royale will win. She promised real change, but we know the truth, don't we? Together we've unmasked this city's true face. Corruption, perversion. But unmasking's not enough. I've parked seven vans all along the city seawall, and when they go boom, the flooding will happen so fast, evacuation will not be an option. Those not washed away will race through the streets in terror. She's okay. I'm fine, yeah. Just give me two seconds. <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ, what's this? What? When did you know? Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it kind of does, a little bit. I, I didn't swallow them, I, I threw them off. So you want to keep it? But you won't. Why not? You think I won't be a good dad? Not like this. Like what? You don't understand. I'm trying to understand. Shane said you were dead. Why the fuck does that have to do with anything? I believed him. He said he saw you drop, he couldn't get to you. Look at me. I said, look at me. What the fuck does that mean? He was there for me. You fucked him? Oh my God, you, you fucked him. You were up. gone. Fucked him and you think you're gonna keep his fucking baby? I wanna keep my baby! You're a fucking whore. You're a fucking whore! Fuck off! My name is Dalton Russ. That's the who. The where can most readily be described as a prison cell. But... There's a vast difference between being stuck in a tiny cell and being in prison. And I'm not in prison. The what is easy. Recently, I planned and set in motion events to execute the perfect bank robbery. That's also the when. As for the why, 
beyond the obvious financial motivation, it's exceedingly simple. Because I can. Which only leaves us with the how. And therein, as the bard would tell us, lies the rub. We're starting a business. We're selling stinky panties to perverts. It's easy. I give you uh, flavor packets, and you give me something that you're, uh, you're already giving away for free. And you're supporting a local business keeping jobs right here at home. I, too, was, was embarrassed and squeamish by my personal eau de parfum, but then I thought, why should I be ashamed? Isn't that part of the self-hatred that has been bred in me by the patriarchy? And aren't those same men that would shame me, not the same men that would wear my panties on their faces? Sister, now is the time to be bold. Let them smell daring and courage. Let them smell character, women who are unabashed and unselfconscious. And let them say that Litchfield is a place where women love their bodies. Sister, we may be incarcerated, but our panties will travel the world. Our smell will linger in some gas station in Toronto, in some office cubicle in Tokyo. You want to be remembered? Then sweat profusely. Andy, I don't want to hear it. What gets me about this whole thing is, is you're the one who pretends you don't care about this stuff. You don't care about fashion. You just want to be a journalist. Blah, blah, blah. What a load of bollocks. Face it, Andy. You sold your soul the day you put on your first pair of Jimmy Choo's. And you know what really kills me about this whole thing? Do you want to know what really gets on my tits? The clothes you're about to get. You don't deserve them. I do. Like, fuck, I do. And not a word goes back to her, okay? And the whole face on your face? The whole feeling sorry for me face? I'm not having it. I'm done. Just go. I said go. Fucking interns. Lying is a sin. But sometimes it is hard to tell the truth. I can tell the truth to you. Do you mostly tell? <laughs> what people want to hear. Especially girls. But not me. No. Really? Try me. Okay. Do you believe in God and Jesus and everything still? Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Have you ever gone all the way with a girl? No. Not quite. No. Nowhere near. Would you, though? What? No. No. It wasn't an invitation. It was just a request for information. Huh. Um... Well... The answer is yes. It's a pity it's immortal, said no. What about you? I don't know. 
sort of seems like such a strange thing to want to do. Ridiculous. It's like somebody wanting to stick their finger up your nose. <laughs> I don't know. I guess you know that feeling when you're dancing and you just feel so free and you just... <laughs> blushing. I'm blushing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't believe we're having this conversation. Neither can I, but it's kind of great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this going to be a problem? that good? I mean, are you excited? I know things are weird between us, but we're having a kind of a, you know, going away party tonight. And I wanted to say, you're invited. Um, I, I can't. You don't have to lie about it. I am not lying. Um, that's really awesome about Japan. It's crazy. Last week, Patrick's boss just called Patch into his office and was like, Japan, bitch! Oh. I wish I could come tonight. Yeah, me too. And where are you living? Hey, do you want to live in our apartment while we're in Japan? Um, no, I am. Um, I'm gonna have my own place real soon. And maybe one day I'll stay with you. Anyway, this. Call is costing us a fortune. Why? It really isn't. Just kidding. You sound really good, Francis. Yeah, I am. Um. Thanks for calling, Sophie. Mm. I'm gonna say something, but I don't want you to feel obligated to say anything back, so I'll hang up right after. I love you, Sophie. Bye. Mom and I, we are decorating the tree, waiting for Dad to get home from work, right? And a couple hours go by, uh, and Dad's still not home. So Mom calls the office, but there's no answer. And, well, Christmas Day came and went, and still nothing. Police began a search. Um, and it was, it was snowing out, it was freezing. So, 
I go to try to light up the fire, and that's when I notice the smell. And the firemen come, they break through the top of the chimney, and Mom and I, we expect them to pull out a dead cat or a bird, but instead they pull out my father. He was wearing a Santa Claus suit. He'd been climbing down the chimney on Christmas Eve night. He was going to surprise us. But he slipped, and he snapped his neck and died instantly. I'm not saying I always do it. OK, that is so gross. Ben, don't act like you don't let a little dribble come out when you're in the shower. I don't let a little dribble come out when I'm in the shower. If you pee in the shower, by definition, it becomes a toilet. This is why you wouldn't survive as a couple. Can I ask you something? I was talking to your dad tonight. Why didn't you tell me he got engaged? I don't know. I guess I just didn't want to tell you something I wasn't ready to think about. Oh. Yeah, he asked me to be his best man. And what did you tell him? I just ran off. Classic Ben move. I panicked. What am I supposed to do? Plan his bachelor party? Hire him a stripper? It's insane. It is insane. I mean, I was pretty bugged out when Lily asked me to be her maid of honor. Yeah, but Lily's your sister. It's perfectly normal for you to be her maid of honor. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I just feel like he's, you know, trying to start over with this new family because he fucked hers up. I mean, at least he's happy. <laughs> for now. Ben, my parents don't really like each other. My mom is always yelling at my dad. And he's kind of checked out, so he just takes it. They didn't want me and my sister to go through divorce, so they stuck it out. And now they're so sad. I'm sure it broke your heart when your parents first divorced, but at least they're not miserable. Hey. Hey, Ben. Yeah? I'm totally reading your boner right now. Fuck. Relax. Elena has strong feelings for you. And you for her. I read your letters all these years. You never truly appreciated who she is. But it's all right. Because I do. You are a child and she is a woman. Take away my shadows and I still have something that you don't. Patience. Alina may well take years to forgive me. But I can wait. Meanwhile, you'll grow old, your hair will grey, and she will remain ageless, like me. And one day, maybe a year from now, maybe 50, she'll realise that she has only one equal, that there are no others like us, and that there never will be. I'm not going to kill you, Mal. I don't need to. Time will do it for me. When I was in Burma a few years ago, their caravans were being raided in a forest north of Rangoon. 
So we were asked to take care of the problem. And we started looking for the stones, but after six months, we couldn't find anyone. Until one day, when I found a child playing with a ruby, as big as a tangerine. The bandit had been throwing the stones away. He stole them because he thought it was good sport. Because some men, they aren't looking for anything logical, like money. So they can't be bought, or bullied, or reasoned, or negotiated with. Some men, they just want to watch the world burn. You know what, Eres? You can't eat fish when you're pregnant. Why? Because of the smell? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> or would I know about women's bodies, eh? Whatever. You know what the worst thing is? I won't be able to wear my new summer dress now. Because you're going to get fat. <laughs> As long as the baby doesn't have that face anyway. She's happy it won't have yours. I could too. <laughs> Myself and Stuart, we did a swirly. So like both of ours together. So we're not gonna know whose it is. Seriously though, thanks for doing this. Our little bun oven. <laughs> You're gonna make a great little employee. <laughs> 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 what the fuck are you doing? I'm your employee. I'm not your servant. You could be pregnant right now, so you can't smoke. How do you know? You just said you know nothing about female bodies. Well, what I do know is, your body isn't your own for the next nine months. You're growing my baby and you'd want to respect that. Right. Mustn't do anything to harm Danny's and Stuart's baby. At least Stuart is really committed to this little family we're building. What does that mean? Him and I, we made sure that I'm actually pregnant. That I am going to be a mommy. Like Stuart would do that. <laughs> oh, yeah? Don't you find it cute, this little snorting noise he makes when he comes? It's like a little piggy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. He, he, he did that for me, though. Mm, maybe. But he did it with me. Sorry, I'm eating for two now. Everything I've done here has been a waste of time, hasn't it? <coughs> you didn't want these men examined, you wanted their names ticked. How many men do you have in the barracks at the moment? And how many of them are free to go out in the evening last night? Because my Dutch patient has been murdered by soldiers. And I want them bound and punished. Are you laughing? Sorry, is this funny? A helpless man battered to death, deliberately, cold-bloodedly. You better take your flags and bits and pieces with you. You know my life. Machines, the arcades. It's a nice business. It takes care of itself. People put money in, and I take money out. It's not much rough stuff. It's a business that makes me very happy. But recently, 
Recently, I've gone into a spot of bother. One of my lads starts flogging machines into clubs who've already got some. And now I've to start plugging machines into other clubs. So far as I'm concerned, that's it, but apparently not. These people I've offended get the idea it'd be good to take over my whole outfit. So I'm, I'm worried. I can't fight them. I haven't got that kind of setup. But I've got to fix them before they fix me. Trouble is, if I try and they find out, I'm dead. I never knew a breakup could be so hard. And it's not just loss of romance or love, but it's the connection that you share. And I keep hoping that he's going to reach out and tell me that he made a mistake, that he doesn't want to lose me in his life, and he can't do this without me. I was walking home from a night out the other night, and I was cold, and I reached into my pocket, and I found these gloves, these black ones that are far too big for me. And I put them on, and I cried the whole walk home. And I kept saying to myself, just come home, darling. And that those words, they, they break my heart. And I know I'll be okay one day. And I didn't want to lose him in my life. I didn't want him to become just a memory. But he has. My accident was the worst thing that ever could have happened to me, Allie. Like, uh, like, like someone put a curse straight through my heart. Things were working out. Everything was going the, the best it had ever gone. I felt unstoppable. You know, now, he, uh, he, he is Gregory, the understudy. What am I supposed to do? Martin's turned his back on me anyways. Knows I can't dance anymore. You know, he, <laughs> he wants me to become this, this loud singer for his friend's new place. I mean, come on, huh? That what I'm being reduced to? After being on Broadway all those years. You know, I feel like it's someone, someone's pulled the plug before I ever had a chance to peak. You know, and I, I wanted to peak. Why'd you just stare at me like that? <laughs> but how are the meetings going? Yeah, they're grand. Yeah? They're so fucking boring, though. Yeah, but do they help? Huh? No, it's good. I got a pin. I got a pin. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you get a medal for fucking up now, do you? Hey, well, at least I'm sober. Couldn't even do fucking drugs right in the end. <laughs> in the meetings, do you have to, like, do you have to speak or? I don't have to, like, I haven't gone up yet. Um, but I was thinking that when I do, I'm gonna tell them about the time that we crashed Dad's car. Jess, I'm joking. I'm joking. It's a joke. Yeah, you want to be joking. Look, I just don't want to be dragged into all... Dragged into what? That's not what I meant. No, no, I know. No, I just mean... It means you think that you're better than me now. Jess, please. Don't really... Don't really... <laughs> Oh, you're taking the piss out of me. Yeah. 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 You're still a bitch. <laughs> vroom, vroom. That's not funny. It is funny. That's not funny. It is funny. That's not funny. It's literally funny. That's not funny. Oh, will you relax, Sam? Seriously. It's funny. It's funny. Are you on something right now? You can't ask me that, you bitch. You're high right now, aren't you? <laughs> oh, what? 
What? <laughs> Seriously? After everything? Are you fucking joking? Oh, come on. All this, all this is fucking bullshit, oh, Relax. Jess. Come on, I found a tiny little baggie left over in my room, all right? I'll be off again tomorrow, it's fine. Get over it. Well, give it to me. I don't have it on me. Oh, yeah, give it to me. I don't have it on me. Please, just give it to me. Please. Where are you going? I'm going to flush it down the toilet. Sam. Sam. I'm sorry. This is fucking hard, man. It's really fucking hard. I know. I'm sorry. Okay, it's fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's fine. Dad was passed out. TV was on. I looked at him for a bit, then thought about my sister. I picked her up and just carried her to the edge of town, holding her. Thought about crossing the highway, then out into the fields. Just keep walking until we got to the ocean. But I couldn't take one step further so I just turned around and went home. I put my sister back in bed. I went downstairs and I sat watching my dad's chest rise and fall. The guy could see the air going in and out of his mouth, illuminated by the light of the TV. I had this thought that I could just stab him in the throat over and over again and watch the blood fall out. Then I'd get my sister again. I'd walk back to the highway and I'd be able to cross it. <laughs> but I didn't do that. <laughs> I just went to bed. Trudging. To trudge. The slow, weary, depressing, yet determined walk of a man who has nothing left in his life, life, except the impulse to simply soldier on. Uh, but to trudge represents pride, pride, resolve, and a faith in the good Lord Almighty. The good Lord Almighty. Yes, please, Christ, rescue me from my current tribulations. Lilium interspenis, the lily among the thorns. Geoffrey Chaucer's the name, writing's the game. Writing, ink and parchment. Yeah, for a penny I'll scribble you all you want. Summonses, warrants, decrees, edicts, patents of nobility, even a poem or two. Perhaps you've read my book of the Duchess. It was allegorical. Allegory.
Where are you going? I'm just gonna go get a cup of coffee. You want some? Um, get me a hot chocolate. Okay. When are you coming back? Um, you know, five minutes. What do you mean? Just have this feeling that you're not gonna come back. I just told you I'm coming back. I'll be back in, in five minutes. I really like you. I'm gonna be really sad if you don't come back. Unless you tell me. If you're not gonna come back, just tell me. Don't lie to me. Are you gonna come back or not? If you don't want me to go, I won't go, all right? I won't get your hot chocolate. We could just... If you want to get a cup of coffee, go get a cup of coffee. Just... Just come back. I just told you, I'm coming back. Can I get a kiss goodbye? What? No. Look... Please, don't start evil. I didn't say I'd give you a kiss. I said I'd get you a hot chocolate, okay? So... Can I have a hug then? Oh, man. Can we just shake hands? Okay. Promise me you'll come right back. I promise. Billy, I just want you to know that you're the sweetest guy in the world and the most handsome. But I love you. <laughs> I was born three days after 9-11. And for two days, my parents were in the hospital holding me. Under the soft glow of the television, they watched those towers fall over and over again until their feelings of grief turned to numbness. And then, without warning, a middle-class childhood in an American suburb. I mean, it's not like I had a shortage of clean water, was physically abused, or was molested by a family member, so explain this shit to me. because I don't remember much between the ages of eight and 10. Only that the world moved fast and my mind moved slow. And if I focused too closely on the way I breathed, I'd die. So now, every day I spend trying to outrun my anxiety. And quite frankly, I'm fucking exhausted. Any idea how long I've been called cockbiter? Four fucking years. People I've never met call me cockbiter to my face. They tell me I bit Simon for her so scrot. And I slept with four guys at the same time. I fucked my second cousin and I'll give you a handjob for a fiver if you fuck it right. Do you know how it started? Simon asked me to kiss him at Claire Gleason's 14th fucking birthday. I said no. And so he told everyone I'd given him a blowjob and bit his dick. That was it. 
this kind of thing sticks and it hurts. No one deserves to be shamed like that, not even fucking Ruby. Did Henry Miller need a degree? Or Samuel Beckett? My point is, you don't come from money, okay? Graduate school is gonna require massive loans. Three more years of school. Then what, a decade or two more of paying them off? I'm not blowing your brains out now. Take some time to picture the narrative of your life. Needing or wanting money is a fundamental trap of humankind. I want you to know I'll be with you in spirit this summer, okay? Take this. Take it. You think you don't like weed? <laughs> you will. Brennan. You'll be with me. In a few short months, we will be in New York City. We'll be living the adventure together. Look, you're an incredible person. I mean, you're really something else, you know? And I've really mostly enjoyed the time we've spent together. But sometimes it's about chemistry, you know? And sometimes chemistry works. And sometimes it doesn't. Look. Salt and pepper go together. Right. But sometimes it doesn't have to. You don't have to have pepper with salt. Sometimes salt goes alone. Sometimes salt goes with other herbs, even. And I'm saying that I, I want to see other herbs. You're friends with Rue, right? Yeah, since junior infants. Don't know why I said that. What was your name again? Lexi. Lexi. I like it. It's a nice name. Thanks. So, Lexi, did you have a good Christmas? Or are you Jewish or something? Yeah. Well, my mom's Jewish, but she always says if the Christians can steal Christmas from the pagans, then the Jews can also. Did you just say the Christians stole Christmas? Well, in order to convert the Germanic pagans who like celebrated winter solstice and stuff, the Christians were like, fuck it, let's just say he was born this day and you can hang tinsel and stuff. And how would you just go and change the man's birthday? In the same way that King James can be on one side of the castle rewriting the Bible and have witches trying to turn his pee into gold on the other. <laughs> How the fuck do you know all this? By reading. So do you like not believe in God? <laughs> Damn. You're fearless, Lexi. Thanks. Do you believe in God? Hell yeah, I believe in God. Well, like a man in the sky judging all your actions and stuff. Hell yeah. Can I ask you a personal question? So. How do you justify dealing drugs then? Well, I mean, my uncle Carl got diabetes from eating too much McDonald's and you don't see anybody going after them. So. Well, if I were God, I don't think I'd let the CEO of McDonald's into heaven. I'd be like, fuck that guy. It's a good point.
I have to go soon. Can I get your number or something? Yeah. Oh, five, five. Two, eight, one, six, six, eight, nine. What? If you can remember it, maybe I'll pick up. Okay. I hope to see you soon, Lexi. Have a good night. You too. I've been seeing a bereavement counselor. She told me I should talk to you again and tell you what you missed. It seems stupid. Fuck it. My sister had the baby. She named her Michelle. After you. And I keep thinking you're coming home, but you never do. The, sh the sheets are... They're the same as you left them. And I can't wash your clothes. They smell just like you. And our song. Yellow. It's on every station for some reason. I miss you. God, I miss you. You know, the funny thing is I could have had this exact party a long time ago. Because Buddy and I, we were together for years and we were inseparable. Jan, Jan knows, right, Jan? Tell him. Buddy got me pregnant at 20. We were gonna keep it. We were gonna have a little baby and a naming ceremony and a big fun aquarium. But 12 weeks into it, I had Buddy's miscarriage. I, I wouldn't wish that on anyone, miscarriage. And maybe if things had been a little bit more hospitable. Down south in my broken body. Buddy and I, we'd be, the, we'd be together right now with a kid and probably even more kids because we, we always found each other, always. Right, Jan? Tell them. But it's okay, I'm gonna make it. Anyway, um, <clears throat> sorry. You look beautiful. Really? Yeah. Because I feel like I might throw up. Okay, don't say that, you, you'll be fine. I know, but can you just, uh, I don't know, distract me or something? Oh, wow. Well <laughs> well... Okay. Well, basically, um... <laughs> okay, uh, I ate pussy for the first time. What? <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Well, don't stop now. Just, um, why? Well, she looked like a young Debbie Harry. And I was drunk. I was curious as well. Uh, so I just said, fuck it. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like? Um, I hadn't a clue what I was doing. <laughs> Your turn. What? Well, I'm sure you have secrets. No. 
Maggie? Um. How bad could it be? I slept with my yoga instructor. <laughs> when? <laughs> Does it matter? Just once. Oh God, oh. how many? Oh, I know. I also took a, a French cookery class like six months ago. Oh, for fuck's sake, Maggie. I know, I know. If Sean found out, it'd kill him. I know, I'm sorry. I don't know why you're saying sorry, it's just... Because Sean is so lovely, and he's cute, and he's going to make a really good dad. And I've just fucked everything up. And he doesn't deserve a whore of a wife. And I've, I'm just such an awful person, so... Okay, well, don't say that. You're not a whore. <laughs> what would you call it, then? Oh, you don't fucking know. Restless, maybe? With whore-like tendencies? <laughs> oh, shut up! Be honest. Do you love him? <laughs>